Hey there guys, this is HB Shock, and I'm going to be bringing you a walkthrough of the game Dark Souls. Now, the first thing that pops up is the character creation screen. There are quite a few classes that you can pick from, but for the purpose of this walkthrough, we will be picking the Pyromancer. Now, the reason we are picking the Pyromancer is to sit there and throw fire at people. Sounds pretty awesome, doesn't it? Now, when you get to the gift section, you get a bunch of gifts that you can choose from. There's about three that are any decent. Uh, it would start with the Twin Humanities. It can be decent if you need Humanities. Uh, the Black Fire Bombs can be useful for some builds that are used. And then there is the Master Key. The Master Key is the most useful gift that you will ever pick up. The reason for this is that it will open about 90% all doors in the game. That 10%, there's about two or three, maybe five keys that you have to get to open that door. But in any other case, the master key will win over every other gift in the game. Now I paused the video a bit because it went a bit too quickly just so I could talk over it, but now I'm going to sit back and just let you watch the cinematic. In the Age of Ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and was fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Wind's mighty bolts cleared apart their stone skins. Witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. And Seath, the scales, betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. But soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen Carriers of the accursed dark side.
Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. Okay, so now that the cinematic is over, we are going to proceed like normal. So the first thing you want to do is just pick up the dungeon cell key and open up the door. It's pretty straightforward for the beginning, but uh, no, you can comment over it. Say hello to the stray demon. We're going to fight him later, at a much later point. Probably in part 7 or 8, if I'm going to have to guess on that part. Uh, so let's move forward, and you just want to go through the here and up these stairs. Now there is a bonfire out here, and you can light it if you want. I just ran past it because I knew I wasn't going to die, but we will come back to that bonfire at a later point. So it's up to you if you want to light it or not. So we're going to open these doors, and we're going to sprint through this area, because if we stay here, the Asylum Demon is going to land on our head and kill us. So just sprint forward and move through this door. Again, light the bonfire if you want to. I don't think I'm going to die, so I'm not going to bother. First we're going to pick up our shield, the crack round shield, which I don't really like it, but whatever. And uh, we're going to try and dodge arrows and pick up our hand axe. After we've done that, we're going to pick up both items and we're going to move forward. Now the crack round shield, I just don't like the way it is at all. It's doesn't block much and it's a small shield I just don't like the small shields at all it's personal preference but it's the way it is anyway we're gonna go through this fog wall and uh, we're gonna go halfway up these stairs and then fall off the edge the reason we do this is so we don't get hit by this boulder that comes down also uh, you can choose to talk to Oscar here if you want to I don't uh, I think it's faster people say the other way is faster but it's a known personal opinion Plus it's a free 100 souls that you can use later on the point. So it's worth killing him. So we're going to kill this hollow that tried to kill us earlier and move forward. And you're going to note there's going to be something on the right if you are a pyromancer. Uh, it's going to be our pyromancy flame which will allow us to use fire spells now. So that'll be fun. Also I believe I recorded this at 1 o'clock so I'm fumbling around a little bit and I'm not sure why. I think I was mostly tired than anything, but I, I swear I'm decent at this game. I think. Um, there's the use of our Estus Flask, which is one of our healing items, just like humanity. And we're going to kill this archer just so he doesn't follow us and go through this fog door. Now we're going to jump off the edge and light attack. The reason we do this is because it will cause a falling attack and do a large amount of damage, as you saw right there. Afterwards, we're just going to get right behind the Asylum Demon and stick on his ass. The reason we do this is because the only thing uh, that will hit you is the stomp, as you're seeing right now. And uh, every other attack, as long as you're directly in the center, not like that, you will not get hit by anything. So you can just sit there and stay and just kind of whack him as you go along. After that, the, asy the Asylum Demon's dead and... It's a pretty easy intro fight, but uh, I remember the first time I did it, I didn't do too well either. So do not be disheartened if you have a little bit of trouble. So after this, we're going to go forward and we're going to just run all the way up to this crow's nest. And we're going to start another cinematic. 
so I will stay quiet during this cinematic as I do not have much to say about it, other than it's a creepy ass crow. So now that we have arrived in Firelink Shrine, uh, there's a bunch of things you can go around and pick up. Obviously, uh, there is the bonfire that you can rest at that I do suggest resting at. And there's also some humanity over here that you can pick up, and it's just some free humanity the game decides to give you. Now resting at this bonfire will give you 10 flasks because the flask has already been kindled. And you can see I leveled up my stats right there. The reason I did this was because we're going to get up to 14 decks in strength in order to wield a weapon called the Uchi Katana. After that, we're going to dump it in uh, Endurance. Now, you can see I'm attacking the Crestfallen Warrior. I do not suggest you do this. If you, if you do this as a new player, you will most likely die. But for myself, I like using him as a parry practice buddy. Now, this is completely up to you, and if you want to do it, but I highly suggest that you do not kill him because he will give you hints as you are going through and he will kill you very quickly if you do not know how to fight him like you see right there. Anyway, we're going to skip forward and uh, move on to the rest of the uh, game. So now uh, the Crestfallen Warrior has been killed and I still do not suggest killing him. I would leave him alone, but it's something I like doing, because uh, I don't need him. But he will give you tips. So now we're going to explore these ruins, and there are several items around the entire place that we can pick up. The first place we're going to go to without falling off the cliff is the graveyard. Now the graveyard, will, uh, the monsters in here will kill you extremely quickly. So you want to just run through this entire place and pick up the items. The first one is a soul that we can pick up. Souls are used, they're, they're an item that you can use that will be converted into souls in your soul counter that can be used to level up and so on. So it's nice picking them up at the beginning just to have a little bit of extra souls as you go along. There's also the Zwiehander, which is a two-handed ultra sword, and there is a winged spear that you can pick up. Neither of them will be used in this playthrough, except for the Zwiehander for a little bit because I broke my weapon later on. But uh, we can laugh at that later. So once you've picked those up, you just want to run back out and run away from these skeletons because they will kill you and they will follow you. So you want to run up these stairs and then go around this corner and pick up another soul that we can use. Now, I would suggest after picking up the soul, just running straight for the bonfire and resting because resting at the bonfire will reset all enemies in your world. But instead, I ran around here and got some fire bombs, which work exactly like the fireball, but they're a usable item. This was a mistake on my part because now I have been followed by a skeleton out here, and I have to kill it. Because if an enemy is around your bonfire, you cannot rest at your bonfire. It sucks. But as you can see, these guys are quite difficult to kill especially at, at a low level, so I would suggest avoiding them. I also noticed I was not wearing my Pyromancy Flame at this point, so I would also equip to that before you go anywhere. But I forgot to do it, and I believe I'm about to do it right now. Another quick note about our build as well is that we will be upgrading the Uchi Katana up to a Chaos Blade at a later point. Uh, the reason for this is because it's a stronger weapon and uh, it's got fire damage on it, so and it's it's a boss weapon, so I I kind of want to use it for once. Um, we're gonna go up here and pick up another soul, by the way, and we're gonna roll off this edge right here to grab a few more items, which involve a cracked red eye orbs, which will allow you to invade another person, uh, a morning star and a talisman. A morning star, sorry, and a talisman, which are completely useful, useless for us. Some homeward bones, which will allow us to go back to a bonfire we recently rested at, and some Lloyd's talismans. 
uh, a Lloyd's Talisman will reset a mob when you throw it at it, or it will stop a player from using Estus Flasks. So, it's a decent item. Also, something caught my attention here, so I don't know what it is, but I'm going to use this to talk. But uh, as I was saying earlier, we're going to use the Chaos Blade, so we will also have to put our strength up to 16 to wield it. Which I do in this video, and bump it all the way up to 16, I believe, and then just leave my strength and dex at 16 and 14. And then I just start throwing stuff in Endurance. Now you're going to ask me, why do I do Endurance? The reason we do Endurance is because Endurance will increase your stamina. The more stamina you have, the more attacks you can do, the more you can roll, the more you can sprint, up to a maximum of 40 Endurance. At that point, it will stop giving you any Endurance whatsoever. We get to a point where it's around 23 Endurance, and then we're going to start throwing some stat points into Vitality. Just so we have a little bit more uh, health as well. So here you can see me using all the souls that we have gathered, just to level up a little bit. I would suggest doing this if you want. Uh, it's completely up to you if you want to do it now or do it at a later point. But you're going to need 14 Strength and Dex to wield the Uchi Katana that we're going to get later. So now we can finally move forward and go up these stairs. The first thing uh, is to just be careful, because uh, these mobs will start rushing at you the moment you get there. Uh, there's nothing much to them other than just waiting and being careful of the guy with firebombs above you. A good idea is to let him throw a fireball at you, a firebomb, sorry, and then run straight past and kill this guy, allowing him to come around and you can just kill him off. There will also be this guy up the stairs that will jump at you if you're not careful. Uh, there's not much to it though. Just kill him and then we can go back down to grab a specific item. But first we have to kill these uh, hollow shield warrior. Now the specific item we want is on this bridge over there. But uh, you have to jump to get over it and as you can see I am horrible at jumping, so yeah, we're gonna restart, and my phone goes off there, so one moment, but we're gonna uh, skip right there for a second, so one moment. Okay, now, we have been skipped backwards, so now we're gonna make this jump and not fall on the pit of death, and we're gonna go around this corner here, and make sure we don't fall off again. Uh, this ring that we picked up, the Ring of Sacrifice, allows us a free death, and... What I mean by a free death is that uh, if you have the ring equipped, you can keep your humanity, your soft humanity, your souls, all if you die. Usually you would drop all of those, but in this case they keep them for you, but the ring will shatter after one use. Now if we go in here and go to the left, we will find a soul and a rat. Rats will occasionally drop a humanity, so it's always a good idea just to kill it when you walk past here. Maybe you'll get a free humanity. Maybe you won't. It doesn't like giving me humanity, so... It sucks, but you might get one. Now we're going to go up here, kill off this guy, and back away from this other one so he does not hit us. And kill him off. Now we're going to go and run straight for this guy, because otherwise he will throw firebombs at you. And we don't want him throwing fireballs at us. And also be careful of the guy in the room to the left. Now we're going to pick up the soul and move forward. Now, do not go too close here, because the Hellkite Dragon will land, like that. And uh, with DS, DS Fix, it may potentially kill you. Now these guys are a bit troublesome because of the archer, but you can get to a point where the archer will no longer fire at you, which is a... Uh, a little bit forward, right about there. You can also use the backstab and vulnerability to help you out if you want. But uh, just clear out these guys like normal and kill off this archer as well to get him out of the way. Now behind us is a room with a bonfire that we should have gone to rest to, but uh, I didn't because I didn't think I would die, but uh, I did. So here, uh, these are spear hollows. The best way to get rid of them 
is just to kick their shield by holding forward on the controller and light attacking. And then you just beat them. Now below is a male merchant that I forgot to actually look at his items and tell you what would uh, be sold by him. That was a bad part of my... Uh, that was bad for me because I forgot completely and just straight up <laughs> killed him for the Uchi Katana. The only way to get the Uchi Katana is to kill him as well. So I start attacking him here, but I shouldn't have, and he ends up killing me. Because I am dumb, see? So I'm going to pause the video, and I'm just going to put a flat screen for you guys, and I'm going to read off some of the items that he can sell and see if you are interested in them. Okay, so the undead male merchant can sell you some repair powder, which will repair the durability on your weapon, some throwing knives, self-explanatory, fire bombs, Lloyd's talismans, an orange guidance soapstone, which you will get on his death, so you don't have to buy it, a residence key, which will open up a door later on, he'll drop that as well, a repair box, which will allow you to repair items at your bonfire, that's pretty good, a bottomless box, it's an item storage management at your bonfire. Uh, a dagger, a short sword, a scimitar, a rapier, a hand axe, a club, a reinforced club, a spear, a short bow, and a number of different shields. The most notable one is the heater shield, which starts with 100% block and 70% fire damage reduction. It's a pretty good shield. Along with that, it will also sell you... Uh, a bunch of arrows, and I believe, yeah, you get the short bow. Other than that, he will sell you chain helm, armor, leggings, and some leather gauntlets. They all cost a different amount of souls, so if you want to buy any of those, you can buy them. Otherwise, we're just going to straight off kill him and get the Uchikutana, the Humanity, and uh, the Residence and Key and Orange Soapstone. So here we go, we're going to go off and kill him, and uh, pick up our souls that we had dropped before, if you died. Don't be like me, don't die. He's not really a big challenge at all. Just get up behind him, and backstab him, and then just wail on him. It really is not a big challenge at all. See? Quite easy. So here we get the Uchi Katana, and we're going to wield the Uchi Katana, because we now have 14 strength and dexterity. So we can wield it with one hand and two hands, which we're going to need. You can also see in the top left I have a, a 1 in my soft humanity counter. The reason for that is because uh, depending on how many mobs you kill in the area without a bot, with, with a boss not being dead, you will gain humanity. So you can just sit there and farm soft humanity if you want. So here we're going to level up and we picked up that shield and to put it on it mainly because I do not like the, the small buckler, so that's the only reason. So here we're going to kill off this archer and these t two or three guys at the bottom here, mainly because they will follow you if you do not kill them. And we don't want them following on us at all, so... You can usually avoid pulling this guy, but I did not because I was dumb. So now we're going to move forward across this bridge. Now we won't want to run across this bridge because fire bombs are going to fall on us just like that. And then we're going to kill these guys off really quickly before this uh, shield hollow realizes we're here and joins the fray. Now, uh, the shield hollow will only stay back like that one time. So every other time now he's going to be in the fray if you do not uh, get through this in one piece. It's also a good idea to kill this guy in here because he will follow you as well if you just move on without him. There are also some black fire bombs in the back here if you want them. Not much to say other than uh, let's take out our pyromancy flame because this is how I like to deal with this, these people. Just so, throw some fire bombs at them, get rid of two of them, and then just run up to the one throwing fire bombs and kill it. It's a lot of hassle fighting three of them and the firebomb guy at the same time. And we're also going to go into this tower and kill off this archer to get 
for a certain reason. Usually you could just ignore him if you're not going to get this ring that I'm going to get, but we need this space up here to fight a black knight, so we have to get rid of the archer. Now another good way to use the uh, pyromancy flame is to take it out here and throw it at this spear guy. Now I got too close, so he started walking towards me, so he blocked a portion of my damage. Just back up, and then throw it from a distance, and it will kill him off. You can also use it to kill these guys in the back here. Makes it a little bit easier and a little less annoying. So now that we've killed these, we're going to go down these stairs, and we're going to walk. And to walk, you just slightly push ahead on your controller, and we're going to walk up behind this Black Knight and backstab him. Now that we've backstabbed him, we're going to just turn around and run back to that area above. The reason that we do this is because we want to have some open area to fight this Black Knight, especially if it's your first time, because uh, Black Knights are a difficult enemy for new time players. But we're going to just sit here and parry him, and then we're going to get around him, and we're going to just sit here and fish for backstabs. Now, the word fishing in Dark Souls means that you're basically just looking for backstabs on a target. And, uh... That's what they'll be called in PvP. Some people call them fishermen, and so on. So we're going to just sit here, backstab, and parry this guy to death. And once he's dead, we're going to go pick up the blue tear stone ring that was behind him. Now, if you have trouble killing him, you can just pull him out and run around him and pick up the blue tear stone ring. You don't have to kill him if you can't manage it, but, you, in, but if you still want the ring, just pull him out, run around him, and pick up the ring. The blue tear stone ring increases your defense once you hit a certain percentage of HP. It's a nice beginning item. It might help you survive. In most cases it won't, but it's still better to be optimistic. And we're also going to put on this ring of sacrifice because we're going to go fight Havel, who can potentially one-shot you. And he does one-shot me. So. I had a feeling I was going to die against him because Havel is a challenge. Also, run halfway up these stairs and then back so you do not get hit by this uh, flaming barrel. And then just deal with this hollow sh soldier like normal. I didn't know you could kick him off the edge there, Phil, so that was new to me. And as you can see, I was kind of confused if he was going to follow me or not. So, this door here will open the door to Havel if you have the Master Key. If you don't, you cannot get to Havel currently. But we're going to just run down these stairs, and we're going to fight Havel. Now, we're going to sit here and just parry and backstab Havel. If you don't feel comfortable uh, parrying him, just sit there and wait for him to attack, and dodge to the left or the right, and backstab him. But first off, we're going to get at the top of the stairs and jump off the edge here. So that Havel will run up the stairs and then run away. Now the key to parrying Havel, like you just saw right there, is to wait until his weapon is almost hitting you. Then you, you parry. At the, as long as you sit there and you be patient, you will not get hit at all. But as you can see, I got hit there because I was impatient. But as long as you are patient and let him swing, you will parry him, just like that. Now, Havel's going to kill me, so I am going to jump ahead. Right there, see, I'm going to jump ahead to the attempt that I actually killed him in, so you can see a full Havel length fight. So, one moment. And by one moment, I mean I will see you in the next part, because I did not realize this video was over.